Hello, my name is Hemingway Jones. Welcome to the channel. This is our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and just about everything that's going to keep you inspired. Today, we're going back into the world of dark academia to speak about the top five inks for dark academia. Let's begin by touching on what dark academia is. Dark academia is an internet aesthetic that celebrates intellectual pursuits, esoteric knowledge, and basically revolves around those places that many of us go to anyway, museums, libraries, cafes, and it's a way to connect with other people or to really romanticize being a part. What I really like about it is that it does push you to read more, to learn something new, and to really embrace the interior life, that vast space of emotional and intellectual landscape that we all possess and often rarely explore. So let's do some of that together. So we have discussed on previous videos some perfect pen choices for dark academia and one of the things that this aesthetic holds in very high esteem is expressive and interesting and beautiful penmanship. And of course one of the major elements of penmanship is your choice of ink. So your top five choices for dark academia are very reflective of particular parts of this interesting and romantic aesthetic. When you think of any time that you choose an ink, you want it to match your mood, to underscore one of the points that you're making, or to just delight and dazzle the eye. When you're considering these inks within the context of dark academia, you really want something romantic, gothic, mysterious, and interesting. And I think you'll find these choices to be very compelling. So allow me to play Virgil to your Dante and take you through the top five inks for dark academia. Our first choice of ink for today is very interesting, very mysterious. It comes to us from Verinjul, and this is Verinjul's Anubis. So Anubis is the Egyptian god of the dead that would help you through the first steps of the afterlife. Anubis is associated with the embalming rites of ancient Egypt. So right there, the associations are perfect. Anubis was expressed with the head of a jackal and the body of a man. It was often shown in hieroglyphs and in idols. These idols were often black based with pigment on them and gold highlights. This ink seems to have distilled the colors of the idols down into their basic components black, rich, deep, dark, Egyptian charcoal black, and hints of beautiful gold in a mysterious expression that looks absolutely brilliant on the page. Egyptology is a popular theme of study within dark academia, and the god Anubis is central to this. He guided and protected the newly deceased as they made their way to their judgment where their hearts were weighed against a feather. So it was very important to be lighthearted in ancient Egypt. 
So Warren Jewel's Anubis has fantastic contrast on the page. It's a beautiful expression with a black base that varies to charcoal gray. It has highlights of gold and copper that just shimmer like the first light through a newly opened tomb. It makes for really interesting notes beautiful letters it complements gold seals now this ink is a touch dry so i would put it in your more free-flowing fountain pens but with all of its beautiful expression with its interesting color its egyptomania and egyptology associations it makes for a perfect color for dark academia Our next choice is Diamine's Oxblood. Diamine's Oxblood remains a favorite of mine and also a favorite for Dark Academia. As its name suggests, it is a rich visceral red with dark clotted shaving, giving it a really wide ranging depth of color expression. It's like writing with blood, but without opening an artery or hurting any actual oxen. The color of diamine ox blood on the paper retains this suggestion of a letter or a note that was written in blood, giving it a very dark gothic feel, an almost vampiric look, and it just makes it that much more passionate and interesting when you use it to write a letter or a note. I mean, writing in the tones of blood just suggests extreme commitment, passion, and it also has this sort of ancient and eternal feel to it because blood just courses through every living thing. It will definitely make an impression. It's also a wetter ink so it's suitable for all pens and it's not weighed down by any kind of shimmer or affectation it's just perfect in its own right it is just purely sanguine and suggestive of sacrifice an absolutely beautiful perfect red and excellent for dark academia Our next choice comes to us from Mont Blanc, and this is Midnight Blue. There was a time when blue inks were very important. This before the days of color copiers and color printers. You could tell whether or not a document was original by the fact that there was a blue ink signature on it. The blue would stand out from the starkness of the white paper and the deep black of the print. Midnight Blue is a deep blue that is almost black, thus offering some contrast while still giving a suggestion of color. It's a mysterious blue, a blue in disguise. It's easily taken for black, and as its name suggests, it's a nocturnal blue, the color of night and the space between stars. It's like writing in shadow, drawing in the color where our fears hide and confining them to a line, to our words, curled and twisted into sentences, bending them and writing in the threat of their return. This beautiful, dark, mysterious blue is perfect for taking notes, for writing letters, and for general use, and it's perfect for dark academia. Our next ink is the perfect brown, suggestive of ancient manuscripts. This is Andorillium's Cuttlefish Brown. Think of the notebooks of Leonardo da Vinci expressed in that beautiful brown ink, or even the writing on the Declaration of Independence, which now appears brown. 
Brown inks were originally made from the ink of a cuttlefish used to ward off a predator. This substance was diluted with water and other materials, and it filled the quills and ink wells of Venice and England in medieval and Renaissance times. It is still sold in Venice today. Some brown inks were also made from walnuts. Iron gall ink also settles into a deep, rusty brown over time. With fountain pens, we can get this effect immediately with certain brown inks. Sepia ink is reminiscent of vellum notebooks, ancient codexes, and forbidden knowledge. Sepia tones imply age, spending centuries in forgotten stacks in wood-paneled libraries. What was worth keeping that long? What secrets could these texts reveal? Using this ink does not only invoke permanence, but near constancy. It seems to draw on all times at once. In your imagination, before black and white, the world was sepia-toned. Use this beautiful deep brown with dark shading for your notes, and it will look like an ancient grimoire or a travel journal from the banks of the Nile in the 19th century, or perhaps the notes of a medieval alchemist spinning lead into gold. Whatever you write in this will be invoking that permanence and people will want to hold on to it. It will look that much more interesting, that much more ancient, and that much more compelling. And this makes it perfect for dark academia. Our last choice of ink for today, and there's so many more I could have chosen from, so I think we will be revisiting this topic again, but our last choice comes to us from the ancient and venerable J. Urban, and this is Le Pearl Noir, the absolute perfect 300-year-old black ink that may very well be the first production mass market ink out there. It's in that beautiful, charming little bottle with the integrated pen rest that we all know so well. It is also an absolutely lovely shade of black, very free flowing, very beautiful on the page. And when you use it, you are jumping into a stream that traces back 300 years of writers, thinkers, diarists, Think of those that used it in the cafes of Paris in the 1920s, up at Pagal in the Belle Epoque, and all the other amazing places, people, and associations with this brilliant ancient ink. But it's also a very nice natural dye ink with a neutral pH that qualifies as one of my good guy inks that can work in any pen, no matter how delicate, including your vintage pens. So this also makes it a perfect choice for your vintage pens. And as we know, vintage pens are a huge part of dark academia. This is also an amazing deep black, a ribbon of obsidian tone, contrasting starkly on the page of your journal. Black has authority, mystique, intrigue, mystery. If you mix all colors together, you get black. If you take all colors away, you also get black. Black is commanding. Black is the alpha and the omega of color that traces a straight line down the tonal palette. Black is also a perfect color for dark academia, looking beautiful and contrasty on the page as you craft a letter to someone you love, a note on your latest book that you're reading, or anything else that you want to have permanence, color, and beauty.
Here's a reminder that the best expression of an ink really comes out in nibs, medium and above. You need a bit of line width to see the full expression of whatever quality of ink you're going to use. Nevertheless, extra fine and fine nibs are fantastic and they can show it as well. But if you really want to delve into all of the unique characteristics of an ink, try a stub. It's fantastic and it will give you incredible line variation, which is held in very high esteem in dark academia. So what do you think of my first five choices for dark academic inks? Let me know in the comments. I have a pretty serious suspicion we will be revisiting this topic again very soon. I want to thank you very much for watching and if you've reached this point in the video, consider subscribing. You seem to enjoy this content. I'd love to have you along on this journey with us. We go to some amazing places. Also, if you want to support the channel further, consider membership. We have a lot of fun and there's a lot of interesting things going on behind the scenes. So come on back behind the curtain. So I release new videos each week and I have a live show every night on Tuesday. So I promise we will see each other again very soon. So take care.